Man, this is becoming the Tommy Lee Jones podcast at this point. And he's not even the star. No, he's not even the star. Harrison Ford is. Nerd Nation, I'm Josh, and I welcome you to the podcast. Grab a cold evergreen gobble to blue milk and make yourself comfortable here at my house of nerd. Now for tonight's sponsor. After the podcast, stay tuned for the new episode of The Running Man. In this episode, Richard Kimball is chased down by the Two-Faced Killer. Will Richard get to the end? Come watch and see next episode of The Running Man. Stay tuned. Now, today on the podcast, we are on the topic for the month, which is movies uh, that started as TV shows. And this week's movie is the 1993 film, The Fugitive, based on the 1960s television series of the same name. The film was directed by Andrew Davis and stars Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, with supporting roles by Celia Ward, Joe Pantoliano, Andreas Katzlusis, and Jerome Krabby. Um, after being framed for the murder of his wife and unjustly sentenced to death, Dr. Dr. Richard Kimball escapes from custody following a bus crash and sets out to find his wife's actual killer, capture him and clear his name while being hunted by the police and a team of U S marshals. Let's start talking about this movie guys. Um, and you know, I'd forgotten about this, uh, when we, when I started watching this, that, this movie actually spawned another movie, U.S. Marshals, which is actually a pretty good movie in and of itself and stuff. Tommy Lee Jones is pretty great, uh, I think, in that role. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think the, the follow-up movie was basically just a vehicle to bring back Tommy Lee Jones. I, like, I agree. How do we put him in the same situation that got us so much money? <laughs> well, hopefully not that cynical, but it probably was. Uh, yeah, we are talking about big movie execs. They don't. They they only care about profit, right? They don't care about movies. Uh, but no, I I really liked uh, I liked U.S. Marshals as well, and that's what it reminded me of. I didn't realize that it was a spawn off of Fugitive at the time. So knowing that makes it a little bit different. I always thought it to me it was kind of it, it's there's there's almost this little trilogy in my mind of Tommy Lee Jones, uh, you've got Fugitive, you've got U.S. Marshals, and then you've got the one, is it Hunted that he did? Um, that sounds right. I want to I want to say it's Hunted with Benicio Del Toro in it. Yeah, the Hunted. So it kind of feels like this little trilogy of Tommy Lee Jones being a badass. Well, you could also put up there with Benicio Del Toro and Tommy Lee Jones in No Country for Old Men too, right? Isn't, aren't they into that movie together? Benicio del Toro is is uh, he's not, not in country. Yeah. yeah, he's not in No Country for Old Men. <laughs> Who is it that's in that movie then? Uh, Anthony. Uh, Who's the bad guy in No Country for Old Men? Not Benicio del Toro. Yeah, not Benicio del Toro. <laughs> okay, then remind me who it is. <laughs> I can't think of his name right now. I think I put him in the same category. I guess I don't know. <laughs> But um, anyways, so uh, yeah, I I forgotten they were uh, um, uh, Javier Bardem. Yeah, They're the same person. Yeah. What? They are not the same person. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're they're both great actors. As a matter of fact, I love Javier Bardem and stuff. Which one, that's the guy that's also in Dune, right? Javier Bardem. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's still yeah. gar yeah he's still gar yeah, yeah. And he does a great job of that but anyways yeah but the the badass of tommy lee jones that's kind of what it reminds me of yeah just no, this, I agree. this trilogy of him i mean i and the hunted he's not a u.s marshal like he is here but it's still kind of i don't know the same outside the law even though they're the law it still feels like an outside the law situation where they come in and they're like we're doing things our way and just take over so i don't know yeah. that was weird yeah, yeah he, I, I didn't get that feeling but yeah i gotcha 
Well, and then I forgot Joe Joe Pantolin, Pantoliano was <laughs> in this as well. He's one of my favorite actors, actually. Really? I, I love him and everything he's done. Memento, Matrix, uh, Bad Boys. Uh, let's see. What's another solid one he's in? I did not know he was in Bad Boys. I've never seen Bad Boys. Oh, really? Well, you're missing out. I mean, I don't know how much you're missing out on, but you're missing out some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but no, I, I enjoyed the movie. I think the movie for me, though, was a vehicle to think about how corporations are in, inherently have no conscience and do anything to protect the bottom line. <laughs> so I became super cynical by the end of this movie since it's all about the, what is it, Provasic? Yeah, Provasic. Provasic, yeah. The the drug and how they're killing people to cover it up. I'm like, you know, we're we're taking this as fiction, but this has happened in real life and continues to happen in, in real life. In, you know, medical industry, in oil industry, in, in hell, heck, in the chocolate industry with, you know, uh, certain big names. And so to me, this movie just served as a vehicle for cynicism by the end of corporate uh, corporate structures and greed. I think that was kind of the point of it. I mean, in a way, wasn't it? You know, uh, that that being basically the whole premise of this movie. I mean, the greed of somebody up higher throwing somebody else under a bus, literally, almost to, you know, to get their point across. You know, uh, with his friend basically, you know, railroading him because he didn't, he was gonna. Um, basically expose the whole scenario of the, of the provasic uh, not being a good. Story. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, did, does the movie itself serve as a vehicle for that? Or was it just a vehicle for the plot? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that the, the movie was trying to make a message about it or not, but that's what I got. No, I don't think it was trying to make a message. The message is there. Yeah, it's not but, nearly as nearly as 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 uh, powerful. Not powerful, but as pointed as Crit's pick last week. Uh, yes. The one, yeah, with, with Russell Crowe. I, I, the name escapes me for the moment. Um, it's not nearly as pointed as that. I think this is way definitely focuses more on the action aspect and the action film. I would agree with that. State of play is what you're thinking of. Yeah. Yep. State yeah. of play. Yep. So anyways, but yeah, I, I, I agree. That one was actually making uh, um, the message we're talking about. Whereas this one is kind of, it's just using it as a, a plot uh, vehicle, I think to, you know, get, it's kind of like the big reveal type thing at the end. Yeah. It's like, Oh, this is the reason for the whole thing. Right. Deal. I, I yeah, gotta be honest. Go ahead. Read it. It's basically a whodunit. Um, but the interesting part, I think, is the formula of having two competent characters uh, between Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones characters uh, set against each other and then aligning together at the end once the mm. once the plot does come to a resolution. I well, like and, and not casting Tommy Lee Jones immediately as, as the bad guy. It's like he's a guy doing his job and he's very good at his job. So I, like like you said, pitting them against each other and not not doing it in such a way that makes you hate Tommy Lee Jones, I think was really well done. He, I mean, he came off kind of as a, as a you know an ass, but um, but he he kind of he's one of those guys that kind of could rub you wrong, but the very, towards the end, the way that they kind of played it, you kind of he was still an ass, but he was he was one that you kind of grew to like. I mean, isn't that Tommy Lee Jones in a lot of his movies? Even the one with Nicolas Cage and the helicopters? <laughs> um, yeah. Not the Batman movie, no. <laughs> yeah, okay, not the Batman movie. No, but Firebirds, sure. Yeah, yeah. Firebirds. Which Men in Black. <laughs> Men in Black, yeah, he does. Play Although that. he was more of a plucky mentor, I guess. but he, he still could be grouchy. He was a grouchy, plucky mentor, I guess. Yeah. I think yeah. that's, that's a kind of a role he seems to play a lot. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, you cast him in roles that he does well in. I mean, the same kind of thing he was in, in No Country for Old Men, where he was, he was, um, you know, very sar not sarcastic, but just 
I'm trying to think of a good good phrase for it, but yeah. competent but glum. There we go. Yeah, man, this is becoming the Tommy Lee Jones podcast at this point. And he's not even the star. Him. No, he's not even the star. Harrison Ford is. Yeah. Um, I would beg to differ that he isn't. I mean, I know Harrison Ford is touted as a star, but both of those guys are pretty high profile throughout this entire movie. I mean, you could almost say that these guys are both the stars of the movie. Well, I, I depends. None of the posters have Tommy Lee Jones on them. Well, yeah. They it's, it's the, no, I, I see what you're saying. I just say more from like the acting profile and, uh, have much they're both in the movie i mean they're both in the movie quite a bit well no i, I yeah i think the the but thing if is you're that getting right he's down the, to brass tacks it's yeah harrison ford of course is the star and yeah and he's tommy the antagonist he has yeah. to be on screen a lot yeah and tommy lee jones is what's pitted against the protagonist you know he's not the villain but he is the antagonist yeah without a doubt without a doubt and he does a great job at it and there you know he uh and rightfully so, this could be the Tommy Lee Jones uh, episode. I mean, he he plays a, you know, it just shows you the power of him throughout this entire entire movie. Well, I, I think I said actor. back when, when we were talking about Firebirds that uh, it's like the casting um, people for The Fugitive basically watched him in Firebirds and went, yeah, we want more of that. Just just yeah. bring that over here because he's basically <laughs> the same character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like we're we're just going to extend the script, you know. After he finished with the U.S. military, yeah, I think I think this Air is Force. just the the Firebirds extended universe. <laughs> so Nicholas Cage is alive and well somewhere. Yep. <laughs> well, maybe not. Those life life spans of the Apache pilots went down drastically after the Gulf War. So unfortunate. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's super interesting that's not for this podcast, but <laughs> unless we want to go into war history podcasts. Yeah, it uh, seems a little tangential to the <laughs> fugitive. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll start a spinoff just based on this episode. Yeah, yeah there you go. One, one episode spinoff. The, the, the Josh <laughs> podcast extended universe. Is that what it, oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um. You know, speaking of uh, Tom, uh, Harrison Ford being the star, uh, you know, what do you guys think about him? I think he did a really good job. I mean, it's Harrison Ford. I mean, it seems like after his kind of like Indiana Jones days, this is kind of that you kind of get a similar character in a lot of ways when he's in these movies, when he's playing Jack Ryan uh, in a, uh, what Patriot Games, some of all fears, you know, games like shows like this. Um, I'm not saying it's the exact character, but it's there's a lot of similarities between a lot of them in his in his attitude. I I believe. Well, to to me, Harrison Ford's always been kind of like Liam Neeson, where okay. he's the a lot of the same character in every film. Um, okay. Yeah, which isn't a which is not to say it's a bad thing. You know, he's a, he's a horrible actor because he's in similar roles and acts similarly in all of his movies. But to me, to me, he's definitely more uh, of a Liam Neeson and not a, uh, Oh man, maybe Willem Dafoe uh, or who's, who's the, who's the commissioner Gordon in Batman begins. Um, I can't remember his name. He oh, played Winston Churchill. And... Yeah. You're um, Oldman. Old Oldman. Yeah. Gary Oldman. Yeah. So he's he's not Gary Oldman, where his breadth is so broad, and like how he plays his characters and different characters, he's more to me of a, of a Liam Neeson, you know. Yeah, I and I get that. I mean, you see Oldman, and and he's he's just like a chameleon, in my opinion. Oh, he absolutely. Can, oh, he's like one of the ultimate chameleons. I had no idea for a long time that that was the same guy that was in The Fifth Element. I mean. <laughs> I mean, he just to me, he looks so different in the Fifth Element compared to a lot of his. Well, other heck, he, even in mm. even in the professional, he looks different and oh, and yeah. acts so differently in that one. That's another good one, yeah. Um, so that he that's just, another yeah, one we did on the podcast. We yeah, that he just kind of hides in his character. I mean, it's he's so good that it. Sometimes I can't even tell it's even him. But have we, have we mentioned Gary Oldman enough now that we need to do a podcast and with another Just one of his the, movies? <laughs> oh, he'll come up again. I promise. He is. Yeah. He's an amazing actor. So does um, anybody know how this movie compares to the original uh, TV show? 
I've yeah. never watched I a TV do. show. I actually do. I've never seen the TV show, but I know the premise of it. And so it's a show that went on. Oh, I'm trying to think. It, it was it was a very popular, long running show. Um, uh, let's just say that all the key points that they're doing match almost identically, you know, uh, that they use to kind of make this movie happen. Like it's, it's really, really similar. Uh, the, you know, that he was framed, he was a doctor, he was framed by a guy that had a fake arm, uh, you know, and his wife was killed. I th- I'm not sure. The only thing I don't know if it was identical was the whole underlying cause of it all of why he was, why he was framed. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of the same beats are very, very similar. They kind of went over their, um, went out of their way to try to, you know, make this very comparable to the, to the TV show. So but uh, okay. I've never, my mom, I've talked to my mom about this TV show and she said it was very, very interesting, very, very fun to watch. And it was one of those ones that's kind of like a, you know, every week it was kind of like an incredible Hulk type thing where he would go and um, go and help somebody every week while, you know, still run, helping, you know, running away from the, uh, the guy who was always chasing him, you know, in this case, would, you know, Tommy Lee Jones character or he was a police officer in that one, but, but, you know, episode of the week helping so-and-so this week and then trying to get away from the policeman. I mean, it was pretty much how it ran. And then every so once in a while, they, uh, they throw a bone out of him, you know, finding something else that might lead him to uncover who framed him and why and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I, I think they did a, from what my mom told me after I've seen this show, because uh, of her experience with the old TV show, she thought that they did a really good job in in matching it up, uh, you know, turning that TV show into a movie. So, yeah, good job to them, because that doesn't always happen. I mean, they have a hard enough sh- time taking a TV show that was once a TV show and converting it into another spinoff of a TV show or a newer version of the TV show. I can think of like Knight Rider or something like that where they did a really poor job of you know translating that movie into something new and and innovative but you know they also struggle with that in video game movies you mean you didn't like viper i actually did like viper but (laughs) to me to me that was always the spiritual successor of night night rider was viper yeah viper that was a cool show on nbc i liked that a lot as i mean i watched it when i was a kid and i just i I liked it. it I liked it when the car changed to the bulletproof and, you know, had the metal sheen and it was, it was, it was cool. I don't remember anything about the story. Just the car would change and shoot bad guys and crap. You're right. It was a lot like a Knight Rider in many ways, but the car didn't talk. It just, it had some kind of like, yeah, it was just polymer like a polymer or something that would morph. And, yeah. Yeah. Into different shapes and modes and things like that. It was pretty cool. Um, I remember watching it in, uh, season one is awesome. And then we did a season two and it was kind of garbage, but anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, I think this is a really good, a really good translation, um, uh, overall, um, compared to a lot of the other things that we might find, you know, that they translated from TV to movie like Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> uh, that I didn't ever, a lot of people that, that was, that's a very panned movie. That's a, I, matter of fact, I was at the, uh, uh, DI, uh, Desert Industries, for anybody who doesn't know what that is out there, uh, which is basically just like a Salvation Army. Um, it, they, yeah, I can't believe how many copies of Starsky and Hutch I saw there <laughs> in their DVD section. But anyway, um, but uh, yeah, overall good and stuff. So, um, what did you guys think about the overall like action? Did you think it was it like did it suck you enough? Like you know action. I mean, there were some pretty good set pieces here that we could talk about. Um, uh, one of the, I think at the time, the train sequence was one of the biggest sequences of its type, uh, you know, taking uh, advantage of the, the full-size train and, and the wreck. It was, it was, I remember seeing kind of a, a news article about how big of a set piece this was to create and to make. Um 
So you know, there I I felt I find that you know this movie had a lot of um had a lot of good action set pieces, the dam. Um, what did you guys think of it as an action movie? You know, yes, it was a whodunit, but you know, it was still a whodunit with action. Yeah, I think I remember because I was thirteen when this came out, and the major um, special effects they did for the movie were, you know, I mean, they made a big deal about them. They spent a ton of money on it. It seems like, and I think overall, yeah, it did did a great job. It was very entertaining. Um, I think the train crash was uh, appropriately um, just nuts. Uh, it was. That was that was wild. Uh, the, I, I think the dialogue carries this movie more when you're older and the action carries this movie more when you're younger. That would be my suspicion because there's enough action. There's enough suspense. There's running around chasing people and stuff like that to kind of keep you in the, uh, you know, two hour plus runtime. Mm-hmm. And then I think the kind of the character moments between, you know, you just want to see, uh, you know, uh, Jones and Ford, face off, you know, and, and they only do that like three times in the movie where they actually talk to each other. And every time it's like, okay, this is, yeah, it's a nice payoff, you know? So. Yeah. I, I, I think I could agree with that. The action carries it when you're younger and the dialogue keeps you interested when you're older, especially now when we've seen so many action films with so many set pieces that a, a, a movie from what, 1990s, um, I, I wouldn't say it doesn't hold up, but at the same time, we've, we've at this point, I feel like we've been desensitized to action scenes like the ones we've seen in The Fugitive. You know, we have all the Mission Impossibles. We've got all sorts of things that have that have popped up recently. Um, so well, I, fist, I can agree with the that. The fights in this movie are just not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it They're wasn't. Almost TV level. <laughs> it, it wasn't quite uh, Capoeira, but. <laughs> and it wasn't oh. quite matrix four kind of you know bad but it was still pretty bad well it's just not the focus of the movie so when like he's <laughs> kicking his friends butt on the rooftop you know the hotel it's like it i don't like i said it's just it's just kind of early 90s you know fisticuffs big you know it's it's basically one level above you know star trek generations you know heel palm and <laughs> double fisted to the back action nice. like it's not it's not too much more than that right <laughs> yeah i i wish i could disagree but i, I really can't that's, that's okay. like i said it's not really the focus of it it's it's just what it is but you know i I, got, it, I think i think everything else around this works really well i, I think the uh, the bait and switch when they um you know arrest when the police storm his first hideout and arrest the the landlord's son, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, it's just, it, it, this movie does a really good job of kind of keeping you on edge by keeping the uh, uh, Harris's, Harrison's character on edge. I, I would agree with that. Uh, the bait and, they did a, what, the bait and switch even with the, fr- the friend at the end. You know, yeah. that friend was going out of his way to try to help him and gave him money and... Yeah, that one's a little more straightforward because they, that's a kind of a standard plot thing. But, it, you know, they they frame the police coming up to where he's basically living in the basement mm-hmm. as if they're after him. And they did a good job of like kind of, did. you know, kind of keeping that as a, you know, what's he going to do? And he just barely, you know, gets out of there, that type of thing. No, I completely agree with you. That was, it even I even knew it was going to happen. It still made me nervous a little bit for him. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think uh, Harrison's action, you know, during that, his, uh, sorry, his acting during that, you know, really kind of sold it that he was, he realizes how close he is. He's trying to figure out, you know, what he can do and stuff like that. And it just, by a, the idea that they just didn't get to, I mean, it's a lot of coincidences in the movie, but that's fine. That's, that's kind of what makes it interesting. Um, You know, talking about that you just brought up a point of you know yeah we were talking about harrison before might act a lot similar at roles but that just shows you right there he might be act similar but he's still a really good actor because he uh even though he's uh it might be a, a kind of a similar uh uh part in a lot of ways he acts the heck out of those parts and he he conveys to the the movie watcher you know 
the feelings of what's going on a lot. Um, you know, and that's a perfect example of, of that, of him, you know, uh, showing us, you know, or conveying to us what's going on in his, in his feelings, in his, you know, in his mind. Yep. And stuff, but yeah. Well, good. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to act? I feel like we're kind of winding down a little bit. Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Uh, let's go to our reviews. Like uh, a lot sure. Of practice too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would I would watch this with my mom because she enjoys a good action movie and she likes Harrison Ford. Right on, man. Yeah, I right would on. give this a seven out of ten. It was very enjoyable. I enjoyed this very much. Uh, I forgot how much I do did like this movie, um, and uh, I also gave it a seven out of ten. Nice. I thought it was very enjoyable. I really, really liked it. Um, and uh, it's funny when you watch movies and see for a long time, you're like, dang, I know how I like this now. Yeah. And <laughs> to kind of go back to uh, really fast before we move on, uh, apparently it was a really, I didn't, I didn't realize how popular of a movie it was. Did you know it made on a $44 million budget, $368 million in 90, what was it? 92? 93. 93. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of money in '93. Yeah, it did really well. Like it, it, it did several runs. Um, I think I remember. I know we went and saw it in the theater. So yeah, and yeah, then I know I, we rented it later. Yeah, on VHS. Same here. I don't know if I saw it in theater, but I know I rented it, and then I've seen it several times on VHS, HBO. I used to play on HBO and the paid channels a lot. Mm-hmm. So all right. All right, good review, guys. Um, let us go on to our next one. And this next week's selections will be, be coming from John. Yep. John, my, what do you got from us, my friend? Well, my picks are out there. I will let you know. Uh, okay, so number one, Goosebumps. Number two, Moby Dick. Number three, A Bug's Life. So that's Goosebumps. Moby Dick and A Bug's Life. Hmm. Hmm. Anything that you're feeling um, partial to, Crit? Mm, not really. Um, I could take any of them. Uh, I, I don't know. For some reason, I was kind of focusing on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well i was gonna say moby dick that's good I'm, kind of... I'm glad none of them stood out this week i worked hard on making sure that none of them were going to suck you in or anything like that i I'm, and and, and i gave you very everything ba- vague yes oh but they're not vague once you know the i movies. mean they're vague when you're trying to pick them out obviously yeah. with no I, i've well, given you everything you need to know to guess well i hear moby <laughs> dick and i'm thinking to myself uh <laughs> What does that mean, though? Is it really Moby Dick or something like you know? I don't know. Okay, what do you think, Crit? I, I don't. I really don't know. Um, uh, if you're I gonna, know. If you're gonna pressure me to make the choice, I would say a Bug's Life. Okay. All right, let's go with Bug's Life because I really am hesitant about Moby Dick and what's behind that. Okay. So I, I told you these movies were out there. Goosebumps is Star Trek First Contact. Oh, damn. I love that movie. That's my Mo- favorite of all of them. Moby Dick is Star, uh, is, uh, Star Trek II, the Wrath of... Or, sorry. Moby Dick is Star Trek II, The Voyage Home. Oh. And A Bug's Life is Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yes! I- <laughs> <laughs> they were they were all out there oh my goodness they were all well i they were technically out there because they're out in space, space yeah. and each of them has to do with the movie you you know i gave you all the tools you needed to figure it out gone i can't wait to talk about that movie that's a that's a man if, if, well those are all three favorites of mine i could have talked about all the those yep yeah. that's why i picked them i wanted i wanted a star trek episode and i love all these star treks i i really wouldn't have minded the moby dick one which is you know i was I'm sad to see that you were so against it because the voyage home is probably my favorite star trek movie well it's not like you gave me anything to go off of to pick oh up. no 
So, I know, but that was the point. Like I, I didn't, <laughs> okay. I didn't want to, I didn't want to wait because it's not as fun if you, if you wait the choices and you, you get the one you wanted to me, I, I like the, I like the discovery. And I can that. understand where you would go from a voyage, the voyage home, because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff in there about, you know, uh, saving <clears throat> the environment and, you know, things like that. But I, you know, well, and then just Leonard Nimoy's compared to William Shatner's directing. Yep. Like, there's so much you could do, but well, wrath of Khan is going to be excellent too. God. Dude, Ricardo Montalban. We could talk about him all day. <laughs> anyway. All right. I am really excited about this next, next week. Wow. And, uh, all I can say is, uh, thanks for that, John. And to everybody out there listening, thank you for supporting us on our channel and the click like button if you liked what you uh heard here and as always may you be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from all of us here at josh's house of nerds have a good night bye-bye thanks for watching for more nerdy awesomeness please like and subscribe and check out our other